will be looking at the version control Git, and more specifically Git Flow, which is a way to organize your branches. The idea is you'll have your master branch that is never touched unless if it is from a release merge request or from a hotfix merge request. And you'll have a separate branch called develop that you can pull from and start feature branches to add in functionality into your application. From there, you'll merge that back into your develop and from your develop, you'll create a release branch from which that point you can test and take it to your QA environment. And then once that's all successful, you can then merge it into your master. So with brew installed, you can type brew install git and this will install your git packages. And then we can install git flow and the package is called git dash flow dash avh. So I'll start out by creating a new rails application and we'll just call this test app. And once the application is created, we can change our directory to this application and then we can call git init, which will initialize the git repository. Then we can call git flow init and this will ask us what our production branch is going to be. In our case, we'll call it master. Our next release or where we are actively doing our development will be development. And then any feature branches off of our development will prefix with feature. Then you have bud fixes, a release branch, and a hotfix branch, and a support branch if necessary. So you'll see that I'm currently on our development branch and if I type git branch, I can see the list of our other branches. So by default, we have our development branch and our master branch. So I'm going to go ahead and add the initial files to our repository. And then now we have no other changes that need to be committed. So while on our development branch, we can start working on a new feature by typing git flow feature start. And then we can call this something like update readme. This will create a new branch called feature update readme and this will be forked off of the development branch. We can make changes to our readme file. And I'll just delete a bunch of lines from there and then I'll save this file. So now we see that we have a file that we need to commit. We can run git status to see our change files. We can then git add readme. We can commit this. And at this point now, we can say that we are finished with this feature and then we can merge it back into our development. And you would do this by git flow feature finish and then the name of the feature. Or in this case, you can just leave it blank and then it'll merge it back into our development branch. So see that we were on our feature branch, the update readme. We've committed this and said that we are now finished with the git flow feature finish. This merged our feature branch back into our development branch. And if we were to cat the readme file now, you'll see that it is only the three lines. So there is a really neat flowchart of how Git flow is supposed to work. So getting started, you run your Git flow in it. And then from your development branch, you can create features. So you have your Git flow feature start and then your feature name. Once your feature is finished, it gets merged back into your development branch with git flow feature finish and then the name of the my feature or as you saw in our case git flow feature finish will be sufficient if you are working on a feature with other people you can use git flow feature publish before you finish a feature and that'll create a remote branch on your code repository and then you can pull from your remote repository the feature branch with git flow feature pull origin and then the name of your feature. You can also track a feature with git flow feature track and then the name of your feature branch. So once all your development branches completed and you're ready for a next release, you can start a new release with git flow release start and then the name of your release. And to merge your release branch back into your master, you can call git flow release finish and then the release name, or again, you can just call git flow release finish. And this will merge it back from the release branch into your master branch, and then also back into your development branch. And for versioning purposes, you are able to push the tags. So it'll take that release tag and push it up to your code repository. 
As with any production application, there may need to be hotfixes, and hotfixes are not a whole new feature set, but fixing existing functionality. So from your master branch, you can start a new hotfix from git flow hotfix start, and then this will create a new branch for your hotfix. Once you're finished with the hotfix, git flow hotfix finish, and this will merge it back into your master, but then it'll also merge a copy over into your development branch. There's also a nice overview chart to show you just the different commands and stuff that's supported with Git Flow. And there are some more, but these are the main basic ones that you'll be using. So Git Flow init to start your branching. Git Flow feature start to start a new feature. Finish to merge it back into your development branch. And publish will push it up to the remote repository. And pull will pull it from the remote repository. Release for making changes that will go into your master branch. And then hotfix, of course, for making changes to your master branch through a hotfix branch. And while there has been a lot of controversy with GitFlow and the mess that it can create in your history, I do find it a very efficient way to work on multiple features at a time while still maintaining my original master branch as well as development branch. So it's very easy to switch back and forth between features that I may be working on in a given day as well as collaborating with others. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.